For this video, I am first showing the settings required, then the physical actions to sharpen the edges, but without actually grinding them. Finally, grinding the edges. The video also includes sharpening the end cutting edges. We start by setting the amount travelled by the spindle, being equal to the length of the cutting edges plus a small amount, say 2mm. Also needing setting is the position of the tooth rest, which should be supporting the end of the end mill, also close to its outer diameter. Do take note that an end stop is needed in the rest's fence. The primary clearance is seen being set here. However, if it is found that the cutter just rubs when attempting to machine a part, then a secondary angle also needs grinding, say at 10 degrees. At this point, I am using a drawing to illustrate the positioning of the cutter in the accessory. Do take note that this may require the tooth rest to be raised or lowered, though the position is not critical. We now come to the critical part of the operation. First, grinding is done from the end nearest the shank and working towards the outer end. The hand is not used to turn the cutter, only to pull the spindle through the accessory. The spindle turns the hand. Position of the hand is though important. The hand should hold the spindle not the disc which sets the distance moved. If you take hold of the spindle naturally, you may find that the wrist has insufficient easy movement to grind the cutter's full length. Turn the wrist anti-clockwise to provide sufficient easy movement. That is, anti-clockwise looking on the fingertips. I attempt to illustrate these points in the section that follows. Here I illustrate how the position of the hand can be varied. We are now ready to sharpen the four edges. After that, a few tips regarding the process. You will see that I loosen the accessory from the table between each cutting edge. This ensures that the cutter does not contact the grinding wheel as it is turned from edge to edge.
now for a few words of advice. As the stop in the fence is very short, it is easy to get the base plate in advance of it, preventing the assembly to get back against the fence. This is easily done and my advice is to increase the length of the stop in the fence for this task. Here we see the two feed screws being adjusted. First, the one that sets the position of the end mill relative to the grinding wheel lengthwise, and the other setting the amount being ground off. My advice for setting these feed screws is for all uses, is to set them midway prior to positioning the rest as a whole. Then, you will always have adjustment available for the final positioning. Look carefully at the following and you will see that I move the rear of the assembly away from the fence. As this can swing the cutter into the wheel, care must be taken to avoid this. I repeat this so that it can be easily seen. One final tip, it is absolutely essential that the spindle moves freely through the bearings, but without any shake. Do therefore clean it thoroughly before use, and do not add any lubrication. We now come to the next stage, which is to grind the end cutting edges. This is a much simpler process and is largely self-explanatory. I will comment that the two degree angle seen being set is to ensure that the end of the cutter is slightly concave this being an essential requirement of an end mill. This is the final result. This is the final result. We now test the cutter. First, surface finishing, then producing the stem.
step size is 8.5 mm wide by 7 mm deep. I set the width and depth by eye rather than by the lead screw's calibration. As a result, the width is more than would normally be taken, as it is normal for the width of the step to be rather less than half the cutter's diameter. That would be 6mm for a 16mm cutter.